All right, let me say some more, hello, some more hellos. Hello. For, oh, I see we've got Chesapeake in the house. Hello, 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 Brenda. Hello, Miss Ortiz, Spanish teacher from Melwood. I'm so glad you all are here. I do what, oh, we've got Portsmouth. Portsmouth, I believe is the way we say that, right? You know, I'm texting, so I would say Portsmouth, I, I, but don't think that's right. <laughs> Anyway, welcome everybody who's here. I want to introduce you to Melissa Hayes. That is, by the way, spelled with one S, just in case anybody's wondering. Um, Melissa is here. She is an educator, an author of a, oh, tell us, show us the book. A newly minted author of abs, which she will tell you about a little bit later. And oh my gosh, so I'm so glad you guys are all in here. I am know. So to be talking about Genius Hour. Melissa, tell us who you are and how the heck did you get started with Genius Hour? What is that anyway? Um, hello, hello. I'm Melissa, as Cedric said, um, from Ohio, teach second grade. I've taught second grade for 25 years. So I have not, other than subbing for a year in grades K-8, I've been in second this whole time. I love it, love it, love it. And I've been teaching um, Genius Hour for probably 10 to 12 years, I would say-ish. Oh, wow. Um, and I think Genius Hour is kind of like very open. Some people have their very distinctive definition. Uh, but for me, I don't think there's a right or a wrong way to do Genius Hour. I look at it as just a passion project and our students are in the driver's seat and we help as needed. So. Wow. Okay. So when I hear you say that our kids are in the driver's seat and we help as needed. Okay. I'm a teacher. I'm very structured. Um, I have everything organized. You know, we have our routines. Uh, you know, my class is super organized. And when you say, my kids are in the driver's seat. If I'm that kind of teacher, I'm freaking out a little bit right now. So tell me what, especially second graders. I mean, okay, you know, I get it with older kids. They kind of start and learn to learn research. Okay, but I've taught, I've taught littles. It's a lot like herding cats. So tell me, <laughs> tell me what that looks like. Tell, tell me something that will make the organized, hyper-organized teacher a little less freaked out, like not saying things like my kids are in the driving seat and I just help. Well, let me share my screen because I'll share exactly what we do uh, when we start Genius Hour. So this is my wakelet. Um, the first thing I do is I pop open questions and say, what do you love? What are you good at? What do you want to learn? What are you passionate about? What are your dislikes? The kids kind of walk around the room with post-its and share their passions, what they enjoy, what they dislike. And then I read the book, What Do You Do With an Idea? Which is a great book. There's other ones like, uh, What Do You Do With a Problem? There's the one about the engineer. So picture books are great to pull into Genius Hour. So I read this book about what you do with an idea. And then I talk... We'll hold off on that. I talk a little bit about Genius Hour and what it is. So this, I pull this up. This is just a slideshow that gives way more information to the kids um, about Genius Hour. So after we read the story, then we talk about Genius Hour. The first thing, we talk about the topic, and then they have to come up with a question that they are passionate about. For example, if the they want to really learn more about dogs or they love dogs, it's their favorite pet, they want to know all about the different um the different breeds of dogs. So then they have to take the dog topic and make it into a question. Now, some of my beginners might say, you know, uh, how many kinds of dogs are there or something like that. So they use that question. But the higher level thinkers might say, um, have you ever wondered what um, life would be if you were a dog? And then it gears their research and it's more of a higher level thinking. So it's just not this big scattered research about dogs. So they come up with their question. There's beginner, detective, judge, inventor. 
Okay, let me stop you right there. I would like to know, how do you get kids to bridge from how many kinds of dogs there are, you know, oh, how many kinds of dogs are there to yeah. what would life be like a dog? How, what kinds of questions do you ask to get well, that? Well, here's the thing. This is more centered around them individually. So I have kids who might be in a resource room that might have a special ability. So I'm going to gear it more to our their level to make them feel successful. So they might be in more of the beginner detective phase, but then I also have gifted kids. So I teach gifted as well. So the gifted kids come to my classroom and another classroom. So I have kids that might be lower level to really higher level. So when I walk around with each group, I'm checking in to see their questioning. Now they could they can work on their genius hour by themselves or with a buddy or a group of three or four. It could be top of four. So when I walk around, them as a group can work, or if they're by themselves, then we brainstorm ideas. And that's how they come up with their question. Okay, as let's role play that. Because I, I've i done Genius Hour with my kids, but tell me, uh, yeah, let's, let's give the audience a little of an idea <laughs> of what that looks like. So I'm going to ask, um, how many colors are in the rainbow? That's my question, Mrs. So, Hayes. So you are doing your genius hour research on rainbows. What okay, is your topic? Do you know what your topic is? Like, do you want to do your research on rainbows? Yeah, I want to know how many colors are in a rainbow. Okay. So, but let's think broader because when you talk about how many colors, you're only giving maybe one or two facts. We want more facts for your research. We want you to have multiple slides so you can share with your family members all about rainbows. So how can we make that more like a bigger question? How can we think bigger about rainbows? Let's look at our questions. We have a who, what, when, or where. We have a why. Can I oh, 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 I know, Miss Hayes. I know, Miss Hayes. I want to yes. know why are there rainbows? Let me make this bigger because I can't see the question. <laughs> um, you want to know about the colors of the rainbow, right? Or how many colors? Is that I did want to know about how about colors, but now I want to know about how many. Um, why are there rainbows? Where do they come from? Okay, so you want to know, um, just in general about rainbows, correct? Yes. Okay. So maybe we should look at maybe a judge question. You could uh, say something about, would you agree that, or how do you know? Or maybe it would be better to say, um, what do you, I can't see the top of this thing. Oh, there we go. Um, what oh, causes what? a rainbow? What or causes a rainbow? Why That's do you think? Or you could say, why do you think? And then finish that about a rainbow. All of these ones. Okay, everybody, I just put the blog link in the chat. So you can actually open the wakelet and see it yourself. So you can follow along while Melissa's telling us. So tell me about those questions again. There was a judging question because uh, that was great. Yeah, I kind of moved it. So there's a detective see I, I moved it you got me all flustered <laughs> I think I messed it up to where here let me see if I can do a control z nope there's a judge see I moved it and then I can't put it wait maybe I can put it back oh, okay so let there, me, we go. there we go there we go that and I'm there's going to answer a question so Sheila this is I'm so glad you're here we are talking about doing student-led learning, inquiry-based learning, or project-based learning with younger learners. For example, Genius Hour. And that's something that Melissa's been doing with her second graders. So hopefully you'll get to learn how to do it with not only, even if you're an, um, a teacher on middle or high school level, you'll get to learn the basics of what kind of questions you want to animate your students to come up with so that they can go off and find their own learning paths. All right. So there's beginner, beginner, detective, judge, and inventor. So they already have the prompts there. For older kids, it's pretty easy. Third, fourth, the second grade needs a little bit more modeling. But 
depending on your population that's in your class of family members, and as teachers, we all know, you have a wide spectrum of learners and abilities. So this kind of helps guide that. And then I talk to the kids about how we do this every Friday for an hour. So they research. So after we do our intro, we do our question, then they dive in with research that they can use books, they can use Epic, they can use um, the iPad and Google, and then they can use Edpuzzle, which I'll talk about in a little bit too. Um, but basically in the end of their research, they have to have at least eight or more slides. A lot of them love Keynote. We tried it out for Dot Day, so they already know the magic that Keynote can do. So they're all like super excited to uh, animate their slides before they even start the slides. <laughs> So they have to have eight slides and then wait, 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 hold up. Let me back up. So you got second graders who yes. are designing their own slides. Is yes. that what I'm hearing? Yes. Yes. You'd be yes. surprised what littles could do if you just give them the reins. Yeah. You'd be surprised. There's your sound bite, people. You'd be <laughs> surprised what littles can littles can do if you just give them the reins. All right, going yes. on. So they can choose between Google Slides or Keynote. And then they can app smash. So they already know how to use Chatterpix, which is just an audio. They take a picture, they make it talk. Um, we did it for um, the creepy carrots, but they can use Chatterpix. They can use Pic Collage, which they love. They can use Apple Clips, which is a really easy video tool. They can use Poplet Light. They can use pretty much anything and app smash it within their Google Slides or Keynote, choosing whichever one they choose. Now, are then, your students on iPads or Chromebooks or what? Or one to one do? iPads, yes. Okay, yep. very good. So they could also use these kid friendly links, Wonderopolis. Did I miss it? No. So these kid from Wonderopolis, National Geographic, Epic Books. Um, there's oh, you know what, Melissa, those are a little small. Can you go ahead and put us in slideshow mode and we can see the links a little better? I know everybody has access to it. If you just got here, here's the link again, in case you'd like to pull up her wakelet yourself and follow along with us. All right. So let go me on. go back and then I'll click on this one. That way you can have it. So this is the Wonderopolis. They use a lot. National Geographic, Epic, and then that's not our class code. That was my class code last year. <laughs> so they have all that information. There's more kid-friendly links in there, kind of more safe links that they can use. Um, and then this just, I do a lesson about paraphrasing because it's really hard for kids not to just copy from the book. And we talk about that when you copy an idea, you're actually stealing it from someone else. Um, so we want to make sure we paraphrase and say it in our own words. Um, and we talk a lot about that and what it means and how the other person would feel if you did all this hard work and someone just snatched it away. And then we are huge, huge, huge advocators for Word Hippo. I myself love it because it's so versatile and it's easy to use for my littles they i don't know how many times during the day i hear good bad pretty um small big and i'm like uh-uh that's too boring give me something juicier so this is our juicy site so anything we need that's another word for it's juicy and i always tell them if you can't pronounce that word click on that um sound bite and it'll pronounce it for you so it's a great tool for littles, it gives you um, translations. It'll like, it's just amazing. I love this tool and they use it for any type of writing they do. So now I hear what I hear you saying is that you're teaching, you know, you make sure you have the ELA elements, the ELPS elements in there. If you are to here and you are a teacher of older students, please do not undervalue the use of this site because having your students have additional words, having better words, having word choice is a huge part of what we do as educators. So again, whether you teach lower elementary or whether you are preparing your students to write their college essays, Word Hippo has always been one of my favorites as well. All right, go on. And then we always talk about less is more. They all want to put like, way too much on there and I'm like and then they're trying to read the slide and I'm like oh my goodness <laughs> what's going on 
So less is always more. A couple sentences is all you need. Um, and then we talk about pictures. You want to add pictures to these lovely presentations because we talk about books. We pick up books. We like the text, but we love the pictures, especially those graphic novels and how those kids love those picture books. And it's the same way with their presentation. They need pictures because the pictures give us way more information as well. Now, how does this translate, for example, to your pre-readers? Well, funny you should ask that. Two, no, not two. Well, no. Yeah, five, I would say five years ago, I had a little boy who had Down syndrome. And he was not going to get away with not doing genius hour. That's not how this works. So he was with me. He had an aide, but he worked with me mostly one-on-one. -on -one, and he chose to do Sesame Street. And I said, that's great. What are we going to do with Sesame Street? And he held up his stuffy that he brought every day. And I go, oh, you want to do the characters of Sesame Street? And he went like this. And I said, let's do it. So we researched together and he wrote out all the characters. and um. So they, when they do Genius Hour, they not only have to do a presentation with the slides, but they also have to do an activity because I always tell them, we don't want to sit and get or Mrs. Hazel snore and yawn and be bored. Just like you don't want to sit here and have me lecture all day. You want to get up, you want to move, you want to be active. And they're all like, yeah. And I said, so what are some activities we can do with our presentations? Well, in this case, this little boy had a game that we played to determine the character that he was talking about. And this was a very simple game because he had Down syndrome. So this was second grade. So he was probably a kindergarten level. He would hold it up, hold up that stuff. And we were like, oh, what is it? What is it? And then he had like, like another prop to give like an extra clue that he presented within his presentation. It was so good. And it's like, you know, you can't underestimate any kid Okay. And you can't label any kid because they will surprise you and you will learn more from those kids than you ever have before. And he nailed it. He was so proud of himself. And then after everyone said, that was the best genius hour presentation. And it might have had a few slides, but it was so rich in his passion. And half those characters I didn't know. I only knew Abby Cadabby because of my daughter, Abby. And I think there was Elmo and then Big Bird, but I knew so many more after that. So I think no matter the ability, it can be done because I've done it just in small group or one-on-one. -on -one. If they're working for an hour and you have multiple kids at maybe the lower end of the spectrum, that I would have them research pictures because they can do that and mm -hmm. then pull them over one-on-one -on -one and do some facts with them and help them with their slides. But it definitely can be done. Yeah. What about pairing a pre-reader with a student who's advanced? I like that idea. I just don't, being a gifted teacher, I don't want it to be an everyday thing because I worry about those gifted kids being used as like a tutor. Yeah. I would want them to excel. I don't see a problem maybe once in a great while, especially if they want to help, mm -hmm. but I don't want it to be because it's really my job to do it. So um, I like the fact that they can do a little like read on Epic or have the book read to them and then tell me what it says or maybe pause it or just screenshot a picture that'll remind them that we can go back to that section and, and write some items down. Oh, let me say that again. So if you have pre-readers and you're working, for example, with a book or with a research site that is being read to them, you can teach your kids to screenshot, control three, control four, and that way they can say that I wanna go back and look at with my teacher. That is such a great tip, thank you for that. Yeah. All right, go on, let's keep going. The kids also do a self-reflection. So these two examples are, they created, these are all themselves. I just show them example. They actually, the kids already did this a um, couple weeks ago, but they use pick collage. And I say, I need these three topics. I need you to tell me about your research. I need you to tell me about your presentation. And I need you to tell me about your activity. So they can do things like I have enough research or I have eight slides or I'm 
this, whatever items can help them remember my research is done. Then their presentation, I'm speaking loudly and clearly. I'm engaging. I'm ready to go. I'm smiling. And then their activity, I have all my materials. Everyone's involved. And then they usually do like three icons that says, you know, good job, nervous, or not ready, or totally not there. One little kid, um, they had the mind blown when they were ready. <laughs> so cute the other day. But um, it was like a video, I think. But some of them have been so creative with even just the three emojis. So um, this is completely, I just show an example. And then the QR code goes to flip. And every Friday they get on Microsoft Flip and they reflect about their genius hour. They say, you know, today was really good, but Johnny kept goofing off and we only got two facts and we had an hour to do it. And I tell them, this is your diary. I'm not going to look at it. I'm not going to grade it. This is just you to reflect because I don't think kids have enough time to reflect on the process mm -hmm. or they get so mad at someone when all they needed to do was let it out. And this is a good way to let it out. Um, I've had a lot of people say, well, what's your um, outline? Well, what do the kids need to do? And this is the part that could make some people upset, but I don't have an outline because when kids say they're ready, they sign up for a day and time and they come up, they present. And this happens every year. They get up there and they give me like two slides and I don't say anything. I'm like, oh, good job, good job. And then I said, are there any questions? And then they're just popping. And they're like, well, I don't know. I don't know that. Well, I, I don't know that answer. I don't know that answer. And then in the end, I'm like, so what do you think? And they're like, I really need to do more research. It's like a lifelong lesson. And I'm like, that's a great idea. So why don't you do some more research? And in a couple of weeks, why don't you re-sign up and you can present again? Oh, thanks. That's a great idea. It's kind of like when they're older in high school and they don't do as well on a test and we give them time to revisit and then they retake it. And I don't know why we don't do that enough, but we don't. And I think that helps us in life, helps us with organization, helps us with, you know, making sure we have everything, we're confident, we're ready to go. So I really don't have like an outline the kids do. I just say, are you ready? <laughs> go. I think that, that's such an excellent idea. And it also teaches kids, you know, we externally motivate them. And then when they're no longer externally motivated by our stickers or whatever it is, especially when we get in older grades, we wonder why that is. But in this way, you actually build intrinsic motivation. I am reflecting on my learning. I am reflecting on my ability to present now. I am taking the feedback and the consequences of not having completed the assignment without having to have it externally told yeah. to me. I learn it through feedback. And that's yeah. really, you're really building those higher level thinkers. Okay, good job. All right, let's bring it home. So the activity, they can dress the part. I've had kids do football. So they come in with a playbook with targets. They put them in three groups and they have a group doing plays on the playbook, a group doing targets and a group uh, learning how to throw passes. I've had a kid doing baking and then they made no bake apple pie. They brought in all the supplies, told us how to do it, and we did it. I've had kids use Kahoot, Wheel of Names, Flipgrid. I mean, the list goes on and on. So um, the time frame, it's a long process. We've already started, and we probably won't get even started presenting till probably March because we have a new literacy curriculum, so I'm trying to fit everything in. <laughs> all teachers know about that. Mm -hmm. um, and then they just reflect on the flip process. The last part is they have to make sure they put it into their Google Drive. This is something that they would have for years and years and years. So they need to make sure once they save it, when they're finished and present, they put it in their Google Drive. Okay, teachers. Now, these are second graders. They are able to app smash. They can use their devices. They can upload to Google Drive. Let them do those things. Instead of parents having to keep stuff on the refrigerator year after year, and then it gets lost over the years, students who put things in, in second grade and drive will be able to look back. You talking progress monitoring? That 
is progress monitoring and growth monitoring. So, And they already do that in student-led conferences. They have their files and they open them up and they go. <laughs> I don't really do much. I'm like, there you go. You've got, you've got the reins. Go drive that car. Well, tell me how... So I'm hearing this, let's say I'm a teacher and I want to do this, but I want some more information. Are you available to answer questions about how you get, how can we find you? So I'm on Twitter. It's at Mrs. Capital M, Hayes, capital H, fam, lowercase f. Um, I'm on Twitter constantly. I do have an Instagram and Hedrick knows that because I don't. (laughs) <laughs> oh it's it's melissa sisson hayes um you can but she's not over there so i catch her on twitter i've just dropped that in there if you would like to follow her then you can uh follow her at at her handle there and if you have any questions you can drop them to her or you can hashtag ed puzzle and i'll be on the lookout um but there's this other thing that you have to know about her as well if you still if you have questions please let us know while she's telling us about she is a brand new X Factor EDU author. Tell us about your book, Melissa. Okay, so my book is based on this rainbow born square. So this is my daughter's rainbow. She's 16 now. But when she was around five or six, she drew a square rainbow. So her this book is about a rainbow that's born square. And many of kids make fun of her. And she tries to change who she is to fit in with everybody else. And um, in the end, it talks about her sister who motivates her and lets her know that she has Down syndrome. And she was born with an extra color or an extra chromosome. And she was born square. Um, So it's just talking about kids and celebrating their uniqueness and knowing that they should never change who they were born to be. Oh, what a wonderful book. For what grade levels? Oh, I would say any grade level can take something out of this. It's interactive. So throughout the book, it'll say, oh, no, I'm not a rainbow. Hurry, draw a circle in the air. Or (laughs) hurry, shake the book to get the extra color out. So it's interactive for kids. Um, It's repetitive. So any learner can read it. Um, I wanted, and the text is short and sweet for each page. I was mindful as my daughter um, who has Down syndrome loves to read and loves books. And I just, I'm motivated by her every day because she's just a joy to have. And she brings so many colors of the rainbow to everyone. So. So you get to combine motherhood and education and a great story. Now, I will say again, I know that a lot of you who are here are lower elementary students, uh, teachers, but if you have never done a read aloud to your secondary students, I can strongly advise you to consider it. Even when you're reading a picture book, believe it or not, especially if they're, if they're having a a, a rough time coming down or after, um, after lunchtime when, or after recess. It's a great way to actually just capture their attention, literally let them put their heads down, dim the lights and read to them. It's a wonderful, wonderful time. All right. Brenda saying kindergarten. Yes. <laughs> kindergarten was great. Yes. Yeah. All right, Melissa, I would like from Ed Puzzle to thank you so much for sharing this. Again, here's the blog one more time. If you want to go and follow along with the wakelet, please do that at Mrs. Hayes fam or at Ed Puzzle. And if you have any lingering questions, we'd be more than happy to uh, answer those online. Go ahead. And the book is on Amazon. So oh, and get your copy of abs on Amazon. I'm so excited. Uh, Any parting words, Mrs. Hayes Uh, fam? Happy birthday, Melody McAllister. Oh, a belated happy birthday to happy Melody birthday. McAllister. I, think it's today. Oh, yes. I actually think it's today. Oh, it's it's yeah. Tuesday. It is today. That's right. She's <laughs> celebrating on the today. weekends. Yeah. She's 24. One, one of our favorite educators up in Alaska who snowed in. <laughs> but we do want to shout you out for everything you bring, Melody. So I got my two favorite males. I'm talking about that male to this male. <laughs>
<laughs> and hey, we hope to see you. Look for if you want some more training on Ed Puzzles, please go to the website. There are lots of new courses. So join us. Oh, the kids use the vi- I didn't even talk about that. The kids use the videos from Ed Puzzle on wait, let me just hold up. Hold hold the phone. I'm so we, sorry. Oh, people. give us two more minutes. We give gotta me tell two you this minutes. Really cool thing. <laughs> what? I have two minutes? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So oh my when you're doing research with little, sometimes you want to give them a special little area. And so Melissa came up with this wonderful yeah. thing. Go for so, it. Ed Puzzle is amazing because all the videos are in one source. And for K2 kindergarten, it's so nice because you can create an open classroom and it'll give you a code and the kids put in the code and then they're in. They can find their research of their topic and listen to the video. And that's exactly what they did. I can change them out each time. I used Padlet to show for them to scan the QR and get on, click on the Ed Puzzle. Once they clicked on it, then they did a couple things, which was super easy. Then they got to the open classroom. I put the code on the whiteboard and they were in and they loved it. I mean, they're so engrossed and engaged. I mean, look at that. I think it speaks for itself. I'm so sorry. I forgot. <laughs> that's, you know, that's amazing. And you know, if you follow Melissa Hayes fam, Mrs. Hayes fam on Twitter, you will see this is actually from the tweet and they actually talk about Ed Puzzle. So I'm so, they're the sweetest kids. Any other questions you have, drop them to us on social media. We are super excited. Thank you for joining us and we will see you next time. Next, Actually, no Ed Puzzle live in January, but we will see you in, in uh, no, I did it wrong. No live Ed Puzzle in December, but we'll see you in January with D. Lanier. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a great one.